uh, gluten anyway, even, and, and especially if they are siblings. If they've already got a few people gluten-free in the family, they put everybody gluten-free. And I've seen many, many people with negative blood get better on a gluten-free diet. So the next step for me, which I haven't gone yet, is that anybody with any undiagnosed illness at all should trial gluten-free for three months and see how they feel. It might take longer to get better, and someone with rheumatoid arthritis, someone with eczema, somebody with significant neurological harm, they will need at least a year gluten-free to feel the benefits of that, and maybe two years. So we might be advocating a gluten-free diet for everybody who's ill, and that gets back to, should we be living in a gluten-free planet? Yeah, excellent point. I, I, I have reverted strictly to symptom uh, symptom identification with patients um, and genetic testing. I've had a number of occasions where antibody tests had come back negative, and, and of course in those cases it, it's, it's like pulling teeth to convince somebody to go gluten-free. So in my own, in my own practice, I, I pretty much strictly stick to HLA, DQ, alpha, and beta-1 analysis, and with the presence of gluten, uh, gluten-related genes, uh, and, and, and as well as the presence of disease, uh, my advice and my recommendation is, is typically to go gluten-free. And I see very, very wonderful results. I, I think even if I didn't test people and, and suspected the gluten, the gluten syndrome with them, I think I would see the same thing. But fortunately, I'm, I'm able to have access to a lab who's able to give me the data on more than just DQ2 and DQ8. Exactly. And what we do, our recommendations currently over the last six months have been despite normal blood tests with your ongoing symptoms and no other diagnosis we recommend a three month trial of gluten free come back and see us then tell us how you're doing and many of those people are getting better I haven't written that data up yet but the gluten antibodies are only a tool they're not wonderful they're not 100 percent accurate they just give us a guideline for a small number of the population who are reacting to gluten they haven't been designed especially for this test, but we're using them because it's the only test we have. I think that they will be in the future much more sensitive and much more useful blood tests or saliva tests or stool tests that are going to be much more accurate and predictive. I had, I had a question. You mentioned before that um, of the patients in your clinic that went gluten-free with positive antibodies, and correct me if I'm wrong, but it, I believe that you said 80% get better and 20% and 20% do not. Uh, on follow-up with those individuals, do you find that there's another food protein that's 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 kind of hanging them up, or exactly? And the next step really is to look at corn, maize, and to look at dairy. And I like to give these people a good three to six months on gluten-free uh, before suggesting another food is removed because we don't want to make it too difficult. And I think that concentrating on gluten, you get the biggest clinical effect. And then if they're not better, then we keep on working with these people until they're better. And in our clinic, we find nearly everybody gets a lot better. Some people aren't perfect. But we have a, a, a hugely successful clinic by dealing with these common food allergies. And do you use uh, additional allergy testing to try to identify things, or do you just... Well, we, skin prick, we skin prick test everybody looking for immediate allergy. We don't do other um, IgG antibody testing. Predominantly, we're going to find uh, wheat and gluten and dairy intolerance. So they can be done clinically because the IgG food panels have got exactly the same problem as the gliadin testing, that some of them are useful, some of them are not. And in the end, you, the only real acid test is going off the food and seeing how you do. Right. When they become, if they become uh, very tricky, they just, the symptoms won't go away, then we will do a more extensive uh, food allergen testing. And when you do more extensive, is that done through IgG or IgA or? Yes, 
Yes, and and the patients have to organise it, and so we don't run, we don't offer that clinic service in New Zealand. We have to send those offshore to Australia or to America, and okay. so the, the patients will do that and bring their test results back to see me. Okay. Well, wow, this has been a really great conversation. Um, a lot of fantastic information and takeaway. I think that um, that people can uh, can can learn from and and um, and hopefully get healthy from. And I, I greatly appreciate your time tonight because uh, I know it's valuable. And uh, if there's anything I can do for you, uh, I'm I'm coming to the to the states in in June, going to Minneapolis for the. GIG, the Gluten Intolerance Group meeting, annual meeting, and I'm going to Kansas City in November to the American Celiac Spur Association, CSA. And if any of your listeners have got groups of people who they would like me to visit and we can fit them into our schedule or make another schedule later on, I'd be very happy to come and speak. Come and speak in your own town, Peter. I would love to be on the podium with people my mission is to tell people about the potential harm of gluten and what they should know about it and what they should be doing about it. Well, I will definitely make sure to pass that on. I actually have quarterly gluten-free meetings uh, in, here in Houston, and um, we usually have a pretty packed house, somewhere between 80 and 100 people usually. So uh, maybe we, we could coordinate uh, when you're in the States Maybe we could coordinate a meeting and get you to come as a guest speaker. That would be fantastic. Yeah, I would love to do that. That's uh, something I, in me, passionately. Well, it shows by all the books you've written and by all the all the work that you've done. And and uh, once again, I appreciate all that you've done because it's because of doctors like yourself that have really launched me and 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 put me in the right direction to be able to help so many more people. So thank you for what you do, and uh, and thank you, you. Peter. Thank you for having me on your show, and I've really, really enjoyed speaking with you and look forward to meeting you in the flesh one day. You know, same here. Well, you have a great afternoon, evening, and uh, we'll be in touch soon. Thank you. Good night. Good night.